All right, so I can't confirm this, but I am almost certain that Google's trying to silence me for what I'm about to tell you. Exactly 4.45 p.m., I put on Instagram that I think I found some secret Google hiring platform. At 9.15, not but 30 minutes ago, I started to record about it. At 9.25, my computer crashed and has not turned on. I am not exaggerating when I tell you that I feel like Google is listening to me and they're trying to silence me, so I cannot get you this information. I put my phone, my laptop, everything that connects the internet out of my bed. I am in my closet trying to document this just in case something happens. <laughs> I mean, how would they not know? I'm using freaking Google Chrome, I'm using Gmail. They're seeing all these emails going back and forth from my correspondent and I. How would they not know? It just, <laughs> I'm just tripping out. I'm really, I, it's just freaking me out right now. Now, this may sound like a huge conspiracy theory, but I have checked out a ton of other videos, Reddit, subreddits, all these different things going down this huge rabbit hole of what this actually is. And I've seen other YouTubers create content on this exact thing, but none of their channels are half as big as mine are. Some are like only 10,000. And I think that Google has let them keep it up there because they don't feel threatened by it. They're like, no one's gonna care. I think they know that I have a large audience that is gonna take this seriously and they might be exposed. So if you're watching this right now, it means they were not able to stop me. I want you to know, this is real. All I'm saying is that my computer has never crashed in the last two years and just happens to crash on the exact same day I'm trying to tell you about some secret Google conspiracy. It seems a little suspicious. So to give you some backstory, I was contacted by a girl named Alyssa about a month ago and she said the following. Near the very end of the course in the section program wrap up where I could finally claim my badge for completing the course, there was a cryptic message that said, want to solve a puzzle from Google. Then a couple lines of zeros and ones, I figured it must be the binary code and copied and pasted it into a translator. It was a link to a strange looking URL. I was curious and clicked on it. At this point, I start Googling to figure out what I had stumbled onto and learned about the FUBAR challenge. Apparently you have to use Python or Java to solve five puzzles, each one more challenging than the last. You're given a limited amount of time to solve each one. For the first one, you're given seven days. If you get through the first three, you often get an invitation to apply to Google as a programmer. Now you may have heard of this FUBAR challenge. I had never heard of it before and it blew my mind. And I started going down every single rabbit hole that I could possibly find online. And there were a ton of conspiracy theories about how you actually get the invitation because you can't just go and search for this FUBAR challenge. You can't just go and take it. You have to be invited to take it. And a lot of people were saying it's not used anymore and that it's completely debunked and they, you know, that's not something they do anymore. But Alyssa literally just completed the Google Data Analyst certificate and they're leaving these cryptic messages in an email to her. So Alyssa and I start emailing back and forth and I'm like, I have never heard of this thing, but I am extremely interested and I want to help you solve this. Can you provide some screenshots? And Alyssa did not disappoint. So Alyssa says, Alex, thank you so much for taking a look at this. I feel like I'm losing my mind. I'll start with a screenshot of the course of the binary code. Look at all the tabs I've opened trying to figure this out. So right here, you can see it says the Google Data Analytics capstone. And right at the end, it says, want to solve a puzzle from Google. It gives her this binary. She plugs this binary in and it gives her this URL right here. So of course, Alyssa being curious, she clicks on it. It pulls up this very interesting foobar with google.com Google certs. Now I am like nine tenths of the way being done with this Google certification. And at the very end, you're supposed to be connected with somebody to like get a job, right? I haven't finished it, so I don't know. But is this what they were talking about? I mean, I feel like they were gonna connect you with like a company or something. Maybe that was just all a facade. And this is the actual place where you're supposed to go to get the job, but only people who are curious and actually figure this out are the ones who are gonna get jobs. I don't know, let's continue. So she signs in and she gets this prompt and it basically says, to help get you started with your first challenge, type request. So she types request and it says, you are about to begin a time limited challenge. You'll have seven days to complete each newly requested challenge or lose access to this site. If you do not have time for the new challenge, you can sign in and you can save it and try another time. So not only does she find this cryptic link that brings her here, 
When she actually starts the challenge, there is a time section. If she does not complete it in time, she will lose all access to the site and will never be able to try again. I mean, I remember when she sent me these screenshots and my mind was just blown. Let's keep going. So Alyssa starts messing around with the prompts and then she finds this minion work assignments and these two text files. And then she finally came to the challenge and the challenge says success. You've managed to infiltrate Commander Lambda's evil organization. So they give you this little story about the minions right here. And then the real challenge says, write a function called solution data n that takes in a list of less than 100 integers and a number n and returns that same list, but with all the numbers that occur more than n times removed entirely. It provides some test cases for you, as well as the output that should be given so that you can try to figure out this challenge. And then you're given seven days and you have to figure it out. And then Alyssa said something extremely interesting. She said, my husband has also taken the course. He's a couple units behind me. And when I first told him about the binary code puzzle thing, he said I should just skip it. Is her husband working for Google? So maybe that's what most people have done. I don't know. My curiosity got me though. And I've been down a rabbit hole since Saturday. So Alyssa and I start going back and forth on solutions. I'm throwing out different scripts that I think would answer it. We're getting very close, but they kept failing. So eventually we did the most logical thing in the world and we Googled it and we found an answer. And once she saved and submitted her solution, she got this level one complete. You're now on to level two. So after this, Alyssa basically said, hey, thanks for your help. I really appreciate it, but I don't even know if I'm going to continue with this, you know. And then I got to thinking, well, if she got the invitation, let me see if I can use that same invitation and sign in and try the challenge myself. So I copied the URL, I pasted it into my Google and lo and behold, I was granted access. Now, of course, this happened about a month ago, so I had to actually do it because there was a time limit. So I went through and I actually completed the first challenge, as you can see right here. And I am going to go ahead right now and click request and see what comes up. So let's go request. Let's hit enter. And it's now requesting a challenge. All right, I have seven days to complete this. It says my new challenge is called Power Hungry. It's added to your home folder. Time to solve 168 hours. All right, so I put in LS right here. It's showing me this Power Hungry, as well as the journal.txt and start here.txt. So I need to change my directory to Power Hungry, which I did. I looked at the contents again, and we have this README again. So now let's take a look at the README. This is called Power Hungry. It says you need to figure out which sets of panels in any given array you can take offline to repair while still maintaining the maximum amount of power output per array. And to do that, you'll first need to figure out what maximum output of each array actually is. Write a function, solution XS, that takes a list of integers representing the power output levels of each panel in an array and returns the maximum product of some non-empty subset of those numbers. So for example, if an array contained panels with a power output levels of two minus three, one, zero minus five, then the maximum product would be found by taking the subset XS zero equals two, XS one equals minus three, XS four equals negative five, giving the product two times negative three times negative five equals 30. So the solution two, negative three, one, zero, negative five will be 30. Then down here, we have our test cases. And again, it gives us these numbers and an output, and we need to figure it out. So we can either provide a Python solution or a Java solution. Of course, we're going to use a Python solution. And it's going to open up this editor window that we're going to actually create our script to see if it works. Um, once we create it or once we write it, we have to click Save. And then we try to run it by verifying it. And if it works, if we verify that it actually is running properly, and then if we submit it and it works, we can move on to challenge three and keep going from there. I'm actually going to start this right now. I have six days, 23 hours and 51 minutes. So time is of the essence. I'm going to do my best. I will try to create another video if I'm able to solve this one on the next one. And we're just going to see how far we get. Um, I am going to try to solve this myself first. If I can't, then what I'm going to do is just start Googling and using Stack Overflow or different subreddits and resources to see if I can figure this out. I am not going to lie. I am still kind of shook from what happened at the beginning of this video because it was just very, very odd timing. That's all I have to say. But if you're watching this, if everything looks good and my channel hasn't gotten taken down, I think we're in the clear. I am going to leave the link that I am using in the description. If you want to see if you can test it out and try it, I don't know if it's going to work. I don't know if everyone can sign in and do this, 
but it worked for me. So I'm gonna provide it to you to see if you can also get in there and try it out yourself. So with that being said, wish me the best of luck. I'm going to try to solve this as best I possibly can. And I'll see you in the next video.